Station. With Janelle and Will. Welcome back to Alternate Wind Condition. This is episode 11. I am Janelle, and with me is my co-host, Will. Well, let's see. In uh, the past few hours, a couple of days, I've gotten a, a golden Justicar True Heart, a golden uh, Wilfred Fizzlebang, but that's all about Hearthstone. We're talking about magic. So. I'm <laughs> like, what the fuck is any of that? <laughs> like, what the hell does any of that mean? Oh, it's like, Hearthstone. No it's wonder Hearthstone I fucking have no yeah. clue what is just happening in my own podcast. <laughs> I was like, it's very interesting stuff, but not, not, well, we're talking about magic, not that other game. Yeah, well. I, I, my first thought was a golden card. Yeah. What's a golden card? <laughs> All right. Anyways, sorry, guys. No more Hearthstone. We're going to no talk about magic. Yeah. So let's we're get done. right into it, and we're going to talk about what we've done since the last podcast. Magic the Gathering. Get the cards. Play the game hope to win, but as we all know it's not about winning. Draft. Commander. Trading. Legacy. Modern. Standard. Tilt. Table flip. This week in magic starts now. Alright, well, what have you been up to in the last week? Well, let's see. In the past week, let's start off with a small tale of Let's call it karma. I guess karma is the best way to put this. All we'll right, now this. I'm interested. Okay. Um, uh, well, I did a uh, a uh, Magic Origins uh, draft this past week. Um, ended up being two pods of probably like eight people each, so 16 people. And they had it set up where everybody could play everybody. There was no, like, you only pay, play in your pod, best three games, you know. Mm-hmm. It was a get across everybody. So it was four rounds, ended up being. And uh, I was 2-1 and one going into the last round, and my opponent was 2-1. and one. Now, the prize structure that this door has, that if you are 2-1-1, one and one, you get $5. If you're 3-1, and one, you get $10. Okay. And then the person who loses gets absolutely nothing if you decide to play it out. So, uh, go to my fourth round, sit across from my opponent, and it's like, all right, well, you know, hey, you know, we both played pretty well. Let's just get out of here take the $5 a piece, and we both go home with something. And he was like, nope, I want to play. Oh, great. Okay. All right. I said, okay. I mean, whatever. I cherish that ass whooping that I gave him. Oh, yeah? He got wrecked? <laughs> uh, two, yeah. I, two o, um, two, I 2-0'd him. What was and he? What, was he, um, what did he, he was drafting? He was trying to, I think he was trying to do kind of a blue-red, and I know I saw a Sphinx's tutelage in there. <laughs> Is like, um, but I was playing uh, green black uh, beatdown essentially. Is like uh, my pack one pick one out of that deck was a Airbus, uh, and not Airbus, no Titan of Airbus or Airbus is Titan or whatever, anything. You know, it's the it's the one black 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 that uh, is a five five that is indestructible as long as your opponent has no creatures, <laughs> and uh, if for some reason a card gets removed from their graveyard, or a creature gets removed from their graveyard, either returned back to their hand or exiled, uh, I can return that to back to my hand um, oh, wow. from the graveyard. So very powerful card. Um, and, I, and I'm surprised, that, considering he's black, black, black in the casting cost, mm-hmm. I'm surprised how many times I got him down, actually, on turn <laughs> four. More more than I probably should have, honestly. But beyond that, I had some good green creatures. I had some uh, uh, Might of the Masses. I had some... Uh, other things to go along with it, play very well with it, and... In other words, he got his face wrecked. Yeah. He did, he did, and... You always split, you always split. You always, that's the thing, is, if you get to the point where you can, where you can both leave with something, then take it, it is like, because if not, then, you know, someone ends up incredibly happy, like me, or, you know, some and somebody ends up with nothing. <laughs> We're not at a level where it's worth not splitting. Yeah, it's like, well, I mean, even even pro split, I mean, or, like, at big tournaments and stuff like that, when they get to Grand Prix, people... Yeah, but I could understand at that level if you didn't want to. It's like, but, I mean, when you're in the 15th round, if you could draw with your opponent to get in, or you could play it out and risk not making the top eight... Oh, yeah, that's true. You're going to draw with your opponent. It's like... Uh And so, I mean, when... I'm basically saying, here, I am giving you free $5... If we can just walk right now. Mm-hmm. And he's like, nope, don't want to do that. So well, I take the split, and then I ask to play it out. 
Because well, I yeah, want to play the game. Oh, yeah, I've done that before, too. I've been like, okay, I want to split, but I do actually want to play the game uh, yeah. just to see what would happen. And, I mean, I'm perfectly happy with that, too. But uh, he was just like, no, I want all $10 to myself. And I was like, all right. All right, get, get wrecked, son. All yep, right. you're done. Good, good job. So, um, well, the other thing I did this week is I did Friday Night Magic, and we talked uh, in the last episode about kind of some ideas that I had for my deck going forward, um, possibly going straight back to Esper, adding Utter in and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I completely threw all that out the window. <laughs> it's like I'm still I'm still playing Dragons, but instead of going Esper, I'm decided to try out Soul Tide Dragons. Now the instead of running the four Dragon Lord Ojatai's in the deck. Mm-hmm. Instead, I'm running four Silum Guard the Drifting Death. And that is a card that I think, especially if more people are wanting to play Hangerback Walker, that is a great card against them. Because it's like, alright, I can kill your Hangerback Walker, then swing with Silum Guard the Drifting Death. You lose every single one of your tokens at that point, And then just go forward. Okay. The other thing, the other thing that I wanted to try out with the deck, and it seemed to work out pretty well, was uh, Soul Tie Charm. Which, uh, Salt Eye Charm is basically either an ultimate price, it can kill a monocolored creature, it can kill an enchantment, or a artifact, mm-hmm. and in a worst case scenario, or, and actually I'm surprised at how many times I did this during matches, is it can be, uh, draw two, discard one. And That's really good, look, yeah. Yeah, those, those are all really good options. And so I think in the current kind of standard right now, I, I'm actually really liking this deck. Um, I ended up going uh, two one one in Friday Night Magic. Ended up making top eight. Lost in the uh, uh, beginning match, first match of the top eight. Nice. Um, but I, I think I'm, the next kind of variation on it that I'm going to add is I'm going to try to add uh, four Den Protectors into the deck too, because for a control deck, I mean, the ability to get back and choose exactly when I get want to get back at any time. For example, if I want to get back at Silumgar Scorn or a Languish or you know. Crux of Fate, mm-hmm. having the ability to get those things back out of your graveyard is really powerful. It's really and powerful, so, yeah. And so, and plus, it also gives me some protection because the one deck that absolutely wrecked me was um, uh, Mono Red, and even then, I still ended up picking up one uh, one of the three games. But yeah, it, I mean, on the on the play, it just it's, seemed it's a way, good deck. Yeah, yeah. On the on the play, it just seemed way too, or on the draw, it seemed way too slow. Um, so. I was just like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm gonna have to do something else. So, um, but I also came up with, I think, an idea out of the sideboard is since I basically are already running Ultimate Price main deck and Soul Tide Charm, mm-hmm. to run Feed the Clan out of the sideboard. Uh, Feed the Clan is uh, one green instant, gain five life. Unless you have Ferocious, then you can gain ten life off of it. Now, unfortunately, the one unfortunate okay. thing is, uh, the one unfortunate thing is, all my dragons are three power. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, eh. Okay, so maybe not the ideal situation, but the cool thing is, out of the sideboard run one in most uh, aggressive uh, aggro matchups, I'm bringing in Tassiger, the Golden Fang, anyway. And two, he can trigger my uh, uh, trigger the ferocious the ferocious with it because mm-hmm. he is a four power. So, um, so I think there, the opportunity is still there to get the ten life off of that, but it might be just enough to stabilize the board and and kind of go from there. So. And in addition to that, I think running the Den Protectors, worst case scenario, I'll just turn to him and just throw him out there and be like, here, block something, anything. I don't care. <laughs> like, so, um, or, or eat a, or eat a uh, burn spell, one or the other. So, It sounds interesting. I'm not sure if it's something I would run, but... I would say, well, this, this moves from kind of the mid-range control that Esper Dragons is. Dude, this is a control deck. I mean, this is literally a control deck. It is because I'm not going to win fast. There's no hyper win condition or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm only going to be hitting you probably at max six at six at a time if I have both dragons out. Mm-hmm. Um, at most, maybe maybe nine if I have Ugin out with them as well. But for the most part, it's not going to be a very hyper aggressive like like okay, I'm just going to go in and go in and go in, you know. So it's like it's not gonna it's not gonna finish matches, but I think it also gives a little bit more because I mean now in my deck I literally have six burn six uh, kill spells, um, six counter spells, four board wipes. So, 
And the cool thing is now... So you just piss people off. That's all I'm hearing. Is you just, essentially, you're just yes. like, fuck like all that. of you bitches, go die in a fire. Yeah, it's like, it's like if, I think I think in any mid-range matchup, I think that, you know... And plus the other thing, is, the only thing that I've always kind of been annoyed with Dragon Lord Ojitai is he trades with a Siege Rhino. And I'm like, well, what fun is that? I don't want to trade with a Siege Rhino. I want to kill the Siege Rhino. Like, so um, uh, that's where uh, Dragon Lord Selengar can come in. And I mean, Selengar the Drifting Death is really good for that. But the other reason that I really like Selengar the Drifting Death right now is because he plays so well with Languish. Is because you can Languish the board, then they think they're they think their Tassigers and their uh, Siege Rhinos are safe. Then you end up swinging with uh, uh, Selengar the Drifting Death. Yes, you're swinging for zero. I know that's technically correct. But it still is enough to trigger his minus one, minus one. And it will kill... It will finish off all those five power creatures from the Languish. So... It, it, it may be a corner case scenario, but I, I, I think it's something that I can tune and I actually can make into a really good deck, I think. Going well, forward. let, let so. us know how it goes. Absolutely. And then the last thing I did was I actually watched Vintage for the first time on Sunday. So you watched people rolling dice? No, no, not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, but uh, it was like, um, yeah, and now after watching it, because the, they had the Eternal Weekend uh, van- uh, vintage championships, mm-hmm. and good God, the things they were doing with those decks is like. Have, have you heard of the card Oath of Druids? Um, no. Okay, let me tell you how broken this little card is. It's one in a green, and it says if you control fewer creatures than your opponent at the beginning of your upkeep, um, you reveal cards from the top of your library until you hit a creature, and then just put that creature onto the battlefield. So this guy was putting out, you know, Grizzlebrand, Emrakul, you know, just wow. stupid shit. That there's a reason it's banned in Legacy. I can tell you that much. Um, mm-hmm. It's like, but it was amazing to see. And then it was also interesting to see kind of how, because I always think like Legacy is a lot of times about you know denying your opponent mana or resources from Wasteland and Stifle and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You don't get that in Vintage. In Vintage, you actually get more mana because you have access to all the boxes. Or at least one of each of the boxes. Oh. And so they had like seven, eight mana on the board by turn four. And I was just like, like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> like, they're, they're even, sometimes they even started with no lands in their hand, but they started off with two boxes. And it's like, okay, well, I'll just play. Yeah, keep. Keep. Go. Like, I was just like, oh my gosh, what in the world is going on here? <laughs> Yeah, vintage really to me to is just people rolling dice. It really was amazing to watch, and I, I definitely want to build the winner's deck because it just looked like it was it was called Bomber Oath. It, there was apparently there's apparently a combo called the Bomber Man combo. I don't even completely understand it to even explain it. Okay. But <laughs> it's like, and then on top of that, you had the Oath of Druids with Grizzlebrand and Emrakul and God knows what else. <laughs> All right, all and, right. And, believe, and believe it or not, Dragon Lord Jerboka. Dragon Lord Jerboka made an appearance in Vintage. I'm not kidding. <laughs> well, why wouldn't it? It's a good card. Well, see, well, but you know, you know who may have been even better than Dragon Lord Jerboka this past weekend because in the top eight, mm-hmm. there were two decks that were utilizing Hangerback Walker in Vintage. <laughs> it's like it's basically the uh, the um, they call it workshop decks. I've heard it referred to sort of like mud and. And legacy kind of robots, sort of like legacy affinity, essentially. Okay. But it's sort of the same thing. But both of them used Hangerback Walker. I was just like, Yeah. What the that card's world? good. Speaking of right, like I totally put it in my Abzan deck. It oh, wrecks. You did, you did put it in your Abzan deck. Yes. How, for how, the how record, I play Abzan Aggro. I don't play Abzan Control. I put it two of them in there, and he's like, turn two. Uh, sorry, yeah, turn two, like, Fleece Main, turn three, Hangerback Walker. No, I'm sorry, turn two, hang, uh, Hangerback Walker, turn three, and Offenza. Ooh, and that becomes brutal at that point. Just yeah. putting counters everywhere. Yeah, or uh, get him big enough and be like, all right, blow him up, here's downfall, soar in plus, take ten. Yep. It's like, or... Um, the other thing I can imagine is in response to a kill spell, uh, Obzon Charm, your Hangerback Walker put two plus one plus one counters on it. It's like, okay, so mm-hmm. now I get 
you know, I get four power instead of, or Dramoka's Command or whatever else you could Right, throw yeah, in exactly. There. Is like, yeah, the, the, okay, I think at this point it's definitely safe to say the two best cards in Magic Origins are Hangerback Walker and uh, Jace. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jace Rin Prodigy, I think, are easily the two best cards in the format right now. And I mean, I don't even think it's close. I, I think it's far and away the I best two cards. Agree. So, so I, I made all these changes to my abs index, so it's ready to play standard. I got the stomach flu last Friday, though, so there was no standard playing. Uh, I am almost finished making my artifact deck again for a second time. I'm really excited to get that finished. And then I'll have two it? decks to play at standard, because I don't... I, every time I think about that, I don't know why I did it. But I did it. I was to say, yeah, I mean, and it's good... Uh, Honestly, that's I sort of need to build a second standard deck because to counteract. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it'd just be straight mono red if everybody starts playing more mid range stuff at my store or something like that. But mm-hmm. something that kind of I can say like, okay, this is the deck I want to play this week versus the deck I want to play, you know, next week versus. Mm-hmm. So it was like, and I do have a couple other ideas for control decks too. So. And then Sunday, Saturday, 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 we had a party here. And we drafted Conspiracy, and it was amazing. Because nice. somebody brought Modern Facts to throw into the mix. Modern Masters? Modern Masters Facts? <laughs> yes. Oh, Modern Masters 2015? Nice. Yes. So we had crazy shit. Like, I got the um, something heartless that when you tap it, everybody takes half. Oh, I got yeah. really pissed off at something that had happened. At... Some guy got drunk and puked on my carpet. So I got pissed. I'm like, I won't play this game anymore. I was like, I, I had a conspiracy that had me pick a creature and give it haste. I picked him. <laughs> so I dropped him, tapped him, everyone went to four. I was all, fuck you bitches, kill me now. I don't care. Like, <laughs> I screwed up all your game. I was like, and y'all are all dead next turn. Like, I'm moving to two and just like send little creatures at you. And be like, that, was, and that was the death. plan, right? Was I was going to yeah. build up a board, drop him, drop everybody, swing. So, and I'm like, fuck this, you're all dead. You're done. Everybody get out. It's like, take your drunk asses home. <laughs> like, get the fuck out. I win. Get, get up. So. So, very nice. Very nice. It's like, did anybody open any cool, like, um, cool cards from the conspiracy packs? Like, like, Dak Faden is amazingly expensive right now. Especially foil Dak Faden. There was um, some $50 blue card, but I didn't I, I didn't was know. it a foil brainstorm? That's the only thing I can think of. Is no, a $50... it wasn't foil. It was just a fifty dollar card. Oh wow! Yeah. I'm trying to think of what's in conspiracy. That's a fifty dollar card. I, I, I mean, sti- I mean, stifles nowhere near that anymore. I honestly don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I'm trying to think of. I'm trying to I think don't of remember what it was called. That's so. cool though. Anyway, it was a really good weekend. Uh, it would have been better if I'd been able to play. What do you mean? What 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 to call it? Friday Night Magic. Friday Night Magic. <laughs> that thing, yeah. And, and I'm still I'm still 0 for 2 for Seaman Visions, too. As like, and I only have... Oh, actually, no, I don't even have another weekend, because this weekend, I, this Friday, I work uh, evening shift at my job, so no Friday Night Magic for me this week, so no... Th- I'm going to miss out all my Seaman Visions. That sounds so wrong. It does sound wrong. I'm going to have to Let's actually... Let's not I, call it that anymore. All right, uh, Serum Visions, all right. It was like... Um, even though, actually, though, it, it has considerably dropped the price because, I mean, even the foil ones now for the FNM promos are, like, eight bucks a piece. I can literally I can literally foil out my modern deck with Serum Visions, foil Serum Visions now, for about the same price that I bought the original Serum Visions at. Don't. That sounds like a bad idea. Well, I'm actually foiling out. I'm foiling out my modern deck. Right now. I mean, completely foiling it out because it's going to be the base deck. It's still going to be twin. So even if I change colors into you know, black for Grixis or just go straight red blue or something like that. It's still the same colors and I'm using most of the same cards anyway, so <sighs> it's like I don't like a... it when people foil out their stuff. I'm just gonna say that. I like that it raises the price of all my cards, but I could not I don't I don't care for it. It's like well I mean some more some more not exp- not too expensive. The things that are gonna be really expensive if I'm gonna try to foil them out and I have I may have to wait until they uh um until they release them again in another set maybe. But 
foiling out my fetches, I think, are going to be the, the most expensive thing in this in this deck. So, yeah, and, probably. Or maybe maybe even the foil Snapcaster mages. I don't. Snapcasters are not cheap either right now. So, it's like, but those are those are kind of the big things that I'm trying to uh, foil out for that deck right now. But those are the most expensive things, also by far. So. Well, all right. That's enough to that. Let's uh, move on to whatever is next. I forgot. Right. Okay. News. You're going to tell us about the news, which is the Vancouver Mulligan and how it is going to be legal in Zendikar. Correct. And they had put they put out a big announcement this past week, saying that uh, starting with the Battle for Zendikar pre-releases. Uh, the quote-unquote what's called the Vancouver Mulligan is kind of the name that's been dubbed, but the new Mulligan role will be legal in all formats, so that means you'll be able to do it in standard, limited, modern, legacy, it's like it'll be legal everywhere, and just to kind of remind you what this new Mulligan role is, is if you take any Mulligan whatsoever, um, if, like, if you go down to six cards or go down to five cards or ever how far down you go, whenever you choose to keep your hand, you get to scry the scry one, scry the top card of your library, and that's before the game even starts. So, it, yeah, be... I have mixed feelings about this. I think it's going to be really, really, really ridiculous. I would say if, if aggro decks just become overly strong, like I mean, like can't even compete against them on the on the play or on the draw, you know, or something like that. Then I think it's going to be bad, but I don't think I. I think we're I think you're, we're cutting hairs. I think a little bit on this one because I think in the hands of professionals, it makes a difference. I, oh, I think absolutely. I think it's going to make a it's going to make a huge difference in the hands of your standard people who play Friday Night Magic. They're going to look like, at the card. And go, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> I don't know what to do with this. What is this? Like I don't think it's going to be. I mean, will it give an advantage to better players? Yes, by default. But I don't think it's such a great advantage that it's going to be, you know. And if it makes for games where you don't, where you feel like, oh, I drew badly the entire game. Hopefully, if it makes less of those games, or I got mana screwed, or whatever else, um, if it helps those type of games. Then I'm I'm all for it. I'm I'm good. So, but I I, I do know, and it'll be interesting. I think the really the most interesting test for it will be in the Pro Tour, the Modern Pro Tour next year. In, like, February. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good point. I do it's think like, it's going to help any deck that needs a certain hand to begin with. You know, any mulligan uh, heavy decks, like right. my robot deck. My Abzan deck is going to enjoy it, but it's not going to make or break the deck. I'm going to say... When, well, the main the main reason I say the modern one, I think it will be the first true test of whether this rule is really good or really really bad, because if everybody ends up playing Delver of Secret decks, and it gives a an advantage to flipping your Delver on turn two, then that that might mean okay maybe we need to just restrict this to standard or something like that. I, I'm not 100 percent certain. But that will be the true test, I think, as to whether what the strength of the Vancouver Mulligan rule is. Is if it just breaks modern in half, um, then that's bad. Of course, that's very bad. But if it if it doesn't change it that much, and I personally I don't think it would change it that much, because at, in playing modern, I can't tell you how many times the first land I toss down is a fetch land. And so if I turn down fetch land turn one, then crack it, go get an island, and play Delver of Secrets. I no longer know what the top card of my library is. It's like it could be anything at that point. So it only is really advantageous when you have the Delver and you have a a land that you don't have to fetch for. Then you might be able to set it up. But other than that, I I, I don't see it. It's like I don't think it's gonna be that bat breaking or anything like that. Again, also though, aggro decks burn is a lot more efficient in modern as well than say mono red and standard. I think it's gonna be very interesting to see how it plays out. I don't think that we should really go off of what we experienced in Friday Night Magic to no. determine what's going to happen. But I think... 
I about to say I, I, this is this is a this is a I think professional level rule is they they want more interactive matches, which is awesome. I mean, I agree when you're on camera and stuff like that. You definitely want you don't want to have a match that just completely falls apart because somebody just you know got mana screwed or something like that. And there's and that possibility is still there, but when you add this rule in, I think it lessens that oper- lessens that chance. Well, we'll see what happens. It'll be interesting. And it we're going to move on to talk about a, l- a different topic than what we normally do. We're going to discuss rotation. We're going to discuss what you should keep, what you should leave in your binder, what you should get rid of, and maybe what you should try to pick up. Correct, yeah. I would say, now, uh, I mean, I don't think either one of us are finance experts, and there are people who know way more about kind of the speculation and stuff like that, that, uh, like, true people who are into MTG finance do. Mm -hmm. However, this is kind of what I like to say, preparing for rotation beginner's guide, essentially. Because until we, until we, if you wait until the things start coming out for Battle for Zendikar, the spoilers, which we're actually only a couple of weeks away now from the start, from the spoiler starting. If you wait till that long, you're actually probably going to lose a good amount of value that you currently have in your cards already. Yeah, you got to start looking at this stuff now. You do. And so that's kind of the reason why I want to bring it up now a couple of weeks beforehand so that way people can get thinking about these type of things and stuff like that. So the first thing kind of want to go into is what is rotating out? Um, in this case, with the rotation, when Battle for Zendikar becomes legal, um, Theros block, which is Theros, Born of the Gods, and Journey into Nyx, as well as M15, are all rotating out. Um, which means we'll only be left with uh, the Cons of Tarkir block, which is Cons, Fate Reforged, and Dragons of Tarkir, as well as Magic Origins, plus, of course, Battle for Zendikar, which will be coming in. So a so, lot of things will be changing. Yes. A lot of card pro value is going to abruptly tank. More than that, a lot of cards are people just aren't going to want. You can have more and more trouble moving stuff out of your binder if you don't start looking at things now. You want to start with checking out what's being played in Modern and Legacy. Frankly, you should be doing this all the time. You should be doing this because these are the cards that aren't going to go down in value in the near future. So, And and they're already actually starting to see some uh, prices going up because they know that they are going to be used in Modern and Legacy. For example, Theros or Thoughtseize right now is um, already back above twenty five dollars because people know people play Thought Season Modern Legacy. I think they even play it in Vintage. To be perfectly honest, it's a card that's played in every single format. So it's a yeah. card that if you have a, a if you have a play set of Thought Seas, you want to hold on to those because the value will be there. Or if you could pick some up. Or if you can pick some up for really cheap right now, then yeah, the value is going to be there. Kind of the same thing with the second card on this list is um, Eidolon of the Great Revel. It's the red-red. Um, whenever someone casts a spell, it costs three or less. Deal, or convert a man costs three or less, deal two damage to them. Other cards being played in Modern Legacy are going to be Karanos, God of the Storms, Reclamation <laughs> Sage, Court of Calling, Anger of the Gods. I mean, this is Correct. not the complete list, guys. No, no, no. Don't, yeah, don't, take, this, don't take this as law. This is, this is just a small list of the things that are in the, the set that's rotating out that once this all rotates out, it'll be much harder to get your hands on these, which means the prices will go up on all of them. Yes. Ugin, so, he's not rotating, but he's on the list. Yes, So correct. pay attention to those kinds of cards. You always want to pay attention to these cards. They will <laughs> not go down in price very much, so you pick them up when you can get your hands on them. Absolutely. Some Absolutely. other. What else do you want to check out? Now, this is a bit too late if a full list of spoilers is out, but check out what people are speculating the new deck types. If people are saying these cards are going to be amazing for red and green and you're going to have to be pulling your whole deck because you're losing so fucking much then and you want to move into red and green, start picking up the cards now because they'll be cheaper. When the set rotates, they're Correct. going to go bounce up in price. You pick Correct. up those cards now. Yes, as I... Yeah, and if we see some sort of a, I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, they've already sort of announced that allies are coming back in Battle for Zendikar. Um, say there's some sort of like a tribal theme, so like there's goblins and stuff like that. In that case, you want to pick up, say, your Hordling Outburst. Uh, Rabble Master. Your, well, Rabble Master's rotating out with that. Oh, is he? 
He is road chain. My bad. Yeah. But we do have a goblin pile driver in here too. Goblin so. pile driver, yeah. It's like so. Those are the things that you kind of want to be picking up on. In addition to just kind of speculating on the new deck types, and really that's going to come down to what the professionals are seeing as kind of decks. We already have some pretty well established archetypes that aren't actually losing much. So, for example, Obzon. Yep. Um, Obzon uh, loses Thoughtseize, uh, which is one of the cards that it routinely uses. Um, but one of the main ones that I personally thought of is Thoughtseize loses Hero's Downfall. Yep. Now, unfortunately, there's not a really whole lot of good options right now. One of them is Murderer's Cut, but that's... There isn't a lot of very good options. However, I am playing Abzan, and what a lot of us have done is straight up just cut removal, because as of Origins, there's you either need mass removal, or you need no removal. Spot removal, eh. You get too many spot removals in your hand, and it's not a good thing like it used to be pre-Origins. That is very true. That is very true, especially with the hanger backs and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but it, so, but it's a, but say you are just looking for a straight replacement for Hero's Downfall, and a lot of people are going to because they want to yes. keep that type of removal in there. But I would suggest picking up stuff like Utter End. Um, it's one additional mana over, but it's something that can kill Planeswalkers, and that's something that we do not have at this moment that yes. when it rotates out. Now, keep in mind with the rest of these cards that are replacements, and... Zendikar, we might get a better card. Correct. So, yeah. So, this is kind of one of those that... Because if they if they redo, say... Oh, I don't know. Let's just throw... Uh, let's say they do um, Terminate in uh, in uh, Battle for Zendikar. Well, then you're not going to want Utter End anymore because Terminate can kill any creature for a lot more efficient than what Utter End can do. So, so this is don't kind of... spend too much on these traits. If Correct. you can pick them up and you don't wreck your binder, pick them up. All right, so uh, kind of the other things, uh, since we're losing Pelucranos as an option, um, I think Savage Knuckleblade, I think, is a good pickup right now. It's under a dollar um, right now, so I would say pick up some Savage Knuckleblades. Um, also, we're losing Sylvan Carry Added um, from Standard, so you need another two-mana mana dork that can produce multiple different colors of mana. Uh, Rattleclaw Mystic is a good one. If Shana, you're playing red, blue, white, obviously. Yeah. Red, blue, like, green. Sorry. Yeah. It's like, well, even if you're just playing red, green, if you need something to produce red mana, I mean, That's it's not true. bad. Yep. Uh, the other one is also there's a three mana option in Shaman of Forgotten Ways that can produce two manas of any color. Just choose. Uh, that is also an option there. So then finally, one of the ones that I'm actually surprised on is we're actually losing Dissolve. Um, yep. As of now, Dissolve. we are losing Dissolve. We're losing Dissolve and Dissipate. Um, so in terms of three, we don't really have any more good three mana counterspell options, which is why I personally would like to pick up Clash of Wills. It's a uh, X blue counter target spell unless they pay X. So not the not too bad to uh, get your hands on here. So, but there are, there are literally hundreds of examples for stuff that's rotating out that you can kind of replace. Uh, stuff with. Just take so. a look at what's out there. You're really going to want to concentrate on sideboard cards, people, you know, cards that people are already signing in. Utter End was in the sideboard for a long time pre Origins. So it's a really good pick. Stuff. Savage Knuckle Blade is just a good card. I don't know why it's a dollar. I guess because like, there's no pro decks built around it right now, but whatever. Probably. Fuck. It's a good card. So, you know, I wouldn't, myself, I wouldn't pick up Rattleclaw Mystic. Or Shaman of the Forgotten Ra Realm waves, either they're going to print something new, or you're going to drop in to use lose, use the one-drop elf, the other one-drop elf, and the new two-drop elf. It's like... like Rattleclaw Mystic for, for got... For mana? It's like, uh, that, there's no, we're losing Elvish Mystic. There is, I mean... They're going to print wait, a new one. They always print a new one. They might. It's like, no, I don't mean exactly the same, but... Right. It's like... I, I personally think it would be very interesting if they put um, Noble Hierarch back in, because I think Noble Hierarch would... No, 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 God, no. It's like, I don't think they will, but they might. No, so, too good. But, too but, good for but, standard. It's like, but main, main thing is just look for... If, if, you have a, if you have a deck that you really like right now, just start looking to see what things can possibly replace it. And if you can pick that stuff up cheap, definitely do it. Yes. It is like... Other um, the things next thing you want to pay attention to is things that they've reprinted and they'll probably print again and are really fucking expensive. 
I am in the process of collecting a full play set of all the fetches. Correct. As I, and this actually goes into sort of a bigger point than even stuff that they've reprinted and stuff like that. As someone told me a long time ago, I don't remember who it was, I wish I could um, credit them for this, but they always told me to basically invest in real estate, which in magic terms means lands, fetch lands, um, scry lands, scry lands, things that are, things that, the lands that are rotating out. Now, the one exception to this is they just reprinted the pain lands. Uh, pain lands, yeah. You probably want to hold off on picking those up because now there's going to be double the supply essentially. So you're probably not going to make as much money right now. But I think Scrylands are just waiting to be taken advantage of in modern. It just takes the right deck to to use them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Mana Confluence, big big one. That actually should probably fall under the what is played in modern and legacy, honestly. Yes. Uh, Mana Confluence is a huge one that needs to be picked up on. Um, there are a couple other lands, but I think they fall more into kind of the commander stuff we'll get to in a moment. Um, with like the uh, sliver, the sliver land, the uh, other stuff. But general, in general rule of thumb, uh, non-basic lands are always good to You get never know when you might need them. Correct. And like, when you need them, they might be really hard to find because they're say, just not being printed anymore. Correct. And and to this, to this end, not only pay attention to the ones that are rotating out, but pay attention to the ones that are currently in standard. For example, when we lose the Scrylands, it's probably going to incentivize people to play more of the clan colors because we have Trilands yep. uh, right now that can tap for three different colors of mana. So what, what I would see going forward is unless they print something really good in terms of uh, lands and... Uh, Dual colors... Dual color, something like that, yeah. I, I would be under the assumption that probably going forward, we're going to move back to sort of a tricolor format because those are the best lands currently available in the format. Is tri Maybe. Is tri I don't think that's the kind of speculation you want to get into just for rotation. Correct. That's, no, I, I, would, I would not, no. That's not, that's a bit above what we're talking about. A little so bit, yeah. let's right. move away from that. Maybe one day we'll talk about speculation and trade... Correct getting your trade on but for right now we're going to talk more about rotation stuff and that's stuff that's rotating that you if you use play commander pay attention to the legendary creatures that yep. are commander potential like I alicia i don't think she's leaving is she she's not leaving yet no no but, but that's but a good that's an example is if she it, was leaving you'd want to get your hands on one of her but in this case the the type of stuff we're looking at is uh, the gods. We've already mentioned uh, Karanos, but all the all the gods are worth picking up. I think just because if you play commander, if you play commander, they're all really good at commander. They all do very unique, different things that make it worth trying to use those. So I am definitely a fan of the gods. Um, Waste not. I don't know if this is necessarily a commander all star, but it's something that could be very interesting, especially if you had like a mass discard effect or something like that. Uh, uh, deck just made everybody start discarding their hands and everything else. It's something worth considering. Uh, Obelisk of Erd, uh, really big for your tribal decks, like uh, tribal goblins, tribal merfolk, you know, anything that could potentially play tribal and commander, really big. Uh, Sli Sliver Hive Lord is one of the few five color commanders, which are always very, very popular. Um, because you do get the option to play all five colors in that case. And then the uh, last thing is, and I, I just sort of threw this one in there because I think they, they are things that never really saw a lot of play in Standard, but I think they had, could have a really big place in, in Commander. Um, the Souls from uh, M15. The Soul of Innistrad, Soul of Zendikar, Soul of uh, um, Chandelar, Soul of Ravnica. Uh, all of them had very, very unique powerful abilities and but they were always too high costed for like five six something like that i personally would try to get a hold of a couple of those for your commander decks because they really do some really powerful things versus you know bringing three cards back from your graveyard to your hand or drawing a bunch of cards or you know you name it so i think the souls would fall into that kind of uh category i'm trying to think of anything else that is kind of big in this Maybe planeswalkers? People, people can figure that out on their own. We don't need to tell them. But basically cards that are going to be highly 
sought it for after in Commander. Just pick up one. It's Commander. You don't need more than one. Correct. You know? Correct. If you're uh, if you're looking to eventually trade these cards, obviously pick up more than one, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about stuff that it's about it's about to disappear from people's binders. Correct. Now like, anything that doesn't fall on this the, list and is about to trade out, that's Theros, Born of the Gods, Journey into Nyx, M fifteen, get rid of it. Yep, yeah, it's like because it will be it will be bulk rare. And honestly, some of these are bulk rare already. Um, for example, one of the ones I have on this list, Polychronos World Eater. It's amazing that... Well, Millie, he sort of got hurt because he was reprinted in a... Uh, in a uh, uh, no, he got hurt by Siege Rhino. Well, he got hurt by Siege Rhino. Well, I mean, oh, honestly, he, he was one of the best things against Siege Rhino because he could take on Siege Rhino and win for the same mana well, cost. Well, yes, that but... makes him a sideboard card. True. That's my point. He got wrecked by Siege Rhino. Poor fucking yep. Polychronos. That's uh, not thing. the point. Get rid of it. Yep. Uh, same thing with Hornet Queen. It's too expensive to use in Modern and Legacy. It's just not a a card that I would... Well, they might pick it up for Reanimator, but, you know, you're not going to see it. So say, just uh, all of the cards that are not being played in Modern and Legacy, we don't need to go into detail. Right. Get rid of them. Correct. It's like Because those are the places where your value is going to drop considerably. Um... That's where, you know, the card may be $3 right now. If you wait till after rotation happens to try to cents. get it, it'll be going on to $0.50. Cents. It's like, these if, are you're the lucky. Card, if you're lucky. And, and, and the problem is right now, I think, these are things that I would try to trade away first because the cash value for them in terms of trading to another person is higher than what if you traded it, say, to your local game store. Because yes. your, local, your local game store already knows rotation is coming. They are not going to pay you a dollar fifty for a card that's going to be fifty cents in in a month. Yeah. They're not going to do it. They'll give you twenty five cents for it, and then hope they can make their fifty cents back on it. So, it is like so. Get your trade on, guys. Rotation yeah, trade, is coming. Try to trade first, um, and then go from go from there. Um, beyond that, I, I would say I, I think that's basically about all that we have for this. Is like just kind of. Just keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open. Uh, I know I personally love the uh, love the Star City website, and they have someone on there who weekly does a finance article. Yes. Um, your I would cards highly cards are your money. Yes. Invest like... in them. Pay attention to the market. I've got a kid who I don't know how he does it. He just always knows what the card prices are. So every yeah. week I talk to him. What's going up? What's going down? What's being used in modern? What happened at the last tournament? What's going on with these cards? You know, what's the biggest deck coming out right now? What do people think of this? When Hangerbacker was coming out, I knew when it was still an $11 card that it was about to hit 20 bucks. Unfortunately, I couldn't pick up any, but I knew Correct. it was happening. That kind say, of stuff to stay on top of. It's just good say, advice. And let me, let me give you one more sort of suggestion. Uh, if you have, uh, your cell phone may be your greatest tool in yes. this is like and there i have one particular app that i love it's called a uh, mtg familiar and it has a trading thing on there so that when you're making trades with other people you can make sure you're trading the exact same cash value for what the card is now if you get into really expensive cards you want to make sure you're checking condition and everything else to go with it but in terms of just the base am i getting value for what i'm trading for you it's a good way to look at it and it's also a good way to kind of track where the prices are going as well so that way you can see like okay the stuff that we're saying trade away, it's it's going down. It's yes. like it's it's like, or you can see for some reason if something's going up. It, it really is almost. It, it does take a lot between. It takes a lot to try to kind of track where this stuff is going. But the cool thing is the easiest way to usually track it is to do the stuff that you're already doing. Say if you're watching tournaments or if you're you know uh, on uh, Twitch and stuff stuff like that, like SCGs and GPS and stuff like that. Or even if you don't want to watch it, pay attention when the tournament is over results. to yep. the results. If Correct. the deck did really well, all those card prices are about to go through the roof. Pick them Correct. up immediately. Yes. As I, um, I, I still think, uh, just kind of a personal antidote more than anything else, I think one of my best pickups, honestly, was um, uh, Mastery of the MC. Because it was one of those that I saw the week before the GP in Miami. And I saw what uh, uh, Anaya deck did with it in terms of gaining like a hundred some of my life, and I was like, "This card is going to be huge. This card is going to be really, really big." 
And so I ended up picking up a play set of it. And it went up to probably about $15, $20, I think, compared yeah. to the five where I picked it up at. Now, unfortunately, it has come back down a little bit from yeah, where it was. Yeah, there's so much enchantment removal, but... Yeah, there's, yeah. The, the Dramoka's Command basically ruined everybody's fun. So, um, so yeah, so it was... Uh, but this is more speculation. It's yeah, it, something it we'll talk about at a later time. Correct. We're just, like, just start pay, pre preparing. Your card prices are about to change rapidly. That $300, $400 binder you have is about to change. Pay attention. Correct. I'm going to say, yeah, if, if you're going to trade to a store, you probably should have done that already at this point. But at this point, anything you have left over, try to trade to other people and see what they want, what they kind of get for, stuff like that. Um, and then... Uh, yep. And that's going to be it for this week. Yep. We are yep. We are done for this week. Uh, so uh, we're everybody's on Twitter here. Uh, I'm at Red Hawk Will, Janelle. I'm at Janelle Fi J N A E L L E and the number five. Follow me for random shit. Yep. To be honest, that's what you're following me for. Yep. As I, you can follow the show at AWC Podcast. You can also email the show at AWC Podcast at gmail dot com. Um, we haven't gotten any emails recently, so we would love to be getting some emails. Uh, from y'all uh, you can also support the show wherever you can find it for example you can find us on SoundCloud you can like and repost Stitcher give us a thumbs up give us a review and YouTube comment and like on our stuff uh, same thing on iTunes five star review and a uh, and a review a written review I guess is probably the best way to put it right it, yes it goes a long way five seconds of your time goes a long way to getting other people listening which is what we want that's that's how podcasts work we need people yeah. listen to us so absolutely absolutely do, do your little bit we really appreciate it i was like um you can also uh want to mention our sponsor uh bolt snap bolt.net we're finally getting some more articles up uh i know i posted last week talking about how to fix us for dragons and i actually talked about my soul tie deck if you want to go check out the version that i played at friday night magic um it is in there so you can go check that out but the big thing is uh puka trade and we just spent you know, literally the last half hour talking about preparing for rotation and stuff like that. Right now, I think, honestly, if you're really wanting to get the value out of the cards that you have, go on Puka Trade. It's like, because there are people who are still looking for these cards that are actually rotating out, whether for a casual deck or something like that. There's so many, it's more trade partners than you're going to have at your own store. You're literally opening up the entire world for that. And so, um, Definitely check them out. There's a referral link on the Bolt Snap Bolt website. Uh, go through there. You'll definitely you'll be supporting Bolt Snap Bolt. You'll be supporting us. And uh, yeah, we can definitely use all the support we can get. We appreciate it more than we can say. So yes. we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>